thousand kilometres off the coast of Ecuador, in the Pacific Ocean, lies the planet's first UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Galapagos Islands. Famous for the unique plants and animals found nowhere else on Earth, the Galapagos National Park and surrounding Galapagos Marine Reserve are one of the best protected areas in the world. The isolation of these islands has given rise to spectacular examples of evolution, made famous by Charles Darwin. But this isolation also means that the wildlife here is more vulnerable to change, including pollution. Marine plastic pollution is a huge global challenge, affecting all kinds of habitat, and Galapagos is no exception. But there is hope here. The Ecuadorian government and the local community are passionate about tackling the problem of plastic pollution. In 2018, the Governing Council passed new legislation to ban four single-use plastic items in the islands, including straws, plastic bags, styrofoam takeaway containers and non-returnable plastic soda bottles. Whilst we don't yet know where it's coming from, plastics are being found on many of Galapagos's beautiful beaches. Clearly, plastics don't respect the boundaries of national parks. In order to support decision makers to achieve their vision of a plastic pollution-free Galapagos, we are here to support the Galapagos Conservation Trust, Galapagos Science Centre and Galapagos National Park to deliver the vital science needed to make this vision a reality. Our focus over the coming months will be to study microplastics in the marine environment, an important part of the puzzle to really understand how plastics are affecting this unique ecosystem. I'm Dr Kerry Lewis, a marine biologist from the University of Exeter. I'm here in Galapagos as part of a large international interdisciplinary team to tackle the problem of marine plastics. Galapagos is an incredibly beautiful place for wildlife, but unfortunately we're also starting to find plastics here. So we're here to really get a sense of how big that plastic problem is. And not just the big plastics, the small items of plastic too. We want to create a plastics budget to work out where all the different shapes and sizes of plastics are and which wildlife might be at risk for those plastics. The seas around the archipelago look pristine and with all the wonderful wildlife around, you might be forgiven for thinking that plastics aren't a problem here. However, when we look around, we do find larger items of plastic pollution on the beaches of Galapagos. These pieces have been shown to break down into smaller pieces, and when they reach around 5mm in size, they become what we term microplastic. Microplastics are of particular concern because at these small sizes they are easily eaten by a whole host of marine organisms, including those that support life on Earth, the zooplankton. So for us to understand the scale of the microplastic pollution problem around the Galapagos archipelago, we have to take to the sea. We use nets originally designed for capturing zooplankton to make the invisible visible and to uncover just how much microplastic pollution is out there. We also sample this seabed, as many plastics will eventually sink. And finally, we look on the beaches, where plastics will wash up. We also want to know if plastic is being eaten by the weird and wonderful marine invertebrates, such as sea urchins, that live here. By pulling all of this information together, we can get a really comprehensive view of the impact microplastic pollution is having on the Galapagos ecosystem. To monitor long-term trends in plastic pollution, we are also working with local organisations such as the Galapagos National Park and Galapagos Science Centre to train their staff in best practice microplastic research techniques so that they can continue this work over the coming years. Although very important, microplastics are only one part of the plastic story. In order to really tackle the wider plastic problem, it's essential that we collaborate. By working together with scientists from different disciplines, government and local authorities and community groups, our science has a greater impact by providing the information needed to make good management decisions and inspire positive behaviour change. Engaging the young people that live on the islands is key and we're really inspired to see the interest and passion to tackle the plastic problem in the local community. We are proud to be part of an international team working to make a five-year marine litter management plan for Galapagos.